Aquarius, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for November 2018. So Aquarius, before I jump in here, the brand new blog is up, it's active, it is ready for you. You can check it out at stormygrace.com or click in the description box down below and there's a link that'll take you right on over there. Now what I have up for you so far are the major astrological transits and aspects happening for November, December, January and I'm working on February through 2019. There's even a little blurb up there telling you how to locate the aspects and transits in your own chart. So it's free, it's beautiful, it's for you. Check it out, okay? All right, Aquarius, so this month is a movable month. We've got energies changing directions, we've got energies changing signs. So it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> is what's happening. Now, one of the big things happening this month is that Jupiter, after 13 months, is going to be moving out of the sign of Scorpio and moving into Sagittarius. And this is phenomenal for you because where Jupiter goes, he wants to expand. So your social life gets the chance to get bigger, better, more delicious, which is always exciting because you're a natural 11th house energy. So this social business, innovation, change, intuition, this is a big deal for you. So we'll jump into that in just a minute. But what I'm really excited about is that the North Node of Destiny is moving out of Leo and moving into the sign of Cancer. Now this is going to light up the sixth house space for you. And why I get so excited about it is because wherever that North Node of Destiny goes, you will fulfill something, right? You're going to look back 18 months from now and be like, oh my gosh, I did a thing and it was in this sixth house space. Whether it is around your health and your wellness, your mental wellness or your job thing, especially if you do anything freelance. And um, Aquarius, you're very good at being innovative and freelance. So this could definitely be a time where work is changing for you. Co-workers, things with animals, your daily routines and habits. So these things are definitely going to get different for you. And I'm excited because where it goes, it's usually something good. It's like delicious, good stuff. So we'll enjoy that. And I'll be making a separate video about that as well. Now let's jump in here and break this month down by date. So right at the beginning of the month on the 6th, we've got that North Node of Destiny switching from Leo into Cancer into your 6th house. It'll be there for about 18 months, so we're going to watch some really gorgeous changes happen there, and it's like you arrive. It's kind of cool. Also on the 6th, we've got Uranus, who's already retrograde, but he's going to back up from Taurus into Aries. Now, this is kind of an interesting placement because not only does it light up the third house space for you, so communications, networking, social things, your, your thinking, um, also I think things with siblings as well, but because Uranus has already worked on this area of your chart for seven years, holler at me, and it's your ruling planet, you have already done this. What you're going to do during this retrograde until March when it changes sign and goes back into Taurus is review. Just see if there's anything that's been left over that's been left out. Are there some things in your head? Do you need to clear these out? Are there some ways that you've been communicating with people or some people in your network, right? And you need to switch up your network because maybe your network wasn't getting you anywhere, right? Is it time to get that website out finally? It could be any one of these things that rise to the surface. But what you're doing is looking over and saying, do I have any habits that are blocking me here? You have worked on this for seven years do your last little minutes of cleanup as well I think it's a phenomenal time to look back over how has your third house energy changed are you communicating different are you thinking differently are you writing and studying differently right do you have new networks available to you look back over because sometimes the only way to know how far we've gone is to look back right so that's what a retrograde energy is great for now, on the 7th, we've got a new moon happening in the sign of Scorpio, so top of your chart, okay? So we've got a new moon here. The sun and the moon are together, so anything is possible. So with the new moon, we plant these seeds of intention. So this could most certainly be... Um, a new career, a promotion, I think 10th house space and I also think of the way that you're coming out or the way that you're represented, your reputation. For some of you it will be a time of marriage because that is definitely a way we change our public status, right? We go from being single to married or married to single. I go from being um, this particular position at work to being another position. So your status could be changing here. Now if you don't work in a big corporation or anything like that, you're retired, you're staying at home, this applies to you as well. 
what you're doing in the world, your soul level calling, what you have to give is something. And this area is getting a fresh start for you. So what do you have to give? Do you have some volunteer time to give? That would be brilliant. Do you have, what do you have to give, Aquarius? I think that's a great question for you this month, especially because on the 8th, Jupiter is going to be coming home into the sign of Sagittarius, lighting up the 11th house space. Again, the word volunteer comes up for me with you. And social things, social networking, is your social technology up to speed, right? Do you have a laptop that can work? Do you have a phone that can work? Um, if you want to be found in the social spheres, are your profiles up to date? Have you just had enough and you're like, no, I don't want to be a part of these socials at all. So you take that stuff completely down. Whatever it is, Jupiter here is looking to bring an abundance of wisdom to your table and to expand this area, but he doesn't want you to just expand for you. He wants you to expand out there in the world. So look forward to new organizations. Look forward to new places of grouping, new friends coming into your life over this next year. And look forward to getting new long range plans and goals and designs as new people and new opportunities come in and feed our souls. We It's like we get to take a small brief view of the bigger picture and we see that we've wanted too little right? Like there, there's more available if we are willing to trust the plan, if we are willing to walk forward in the unknown. And I think that's very much so a space that you're arriving in. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with Jupiter all the way until December of next year. On the 15th, we've got Mars entering into Pisces and Mars is not particularly comfortable here. Mars wants to go quick, be fast, do things and Pisces is water. So it's kind of slow, right? Now where this gives you an opportunity to use this energy is to slow down a little bit. And this is going to be in your second house space. So do you need to slow down and take a skill or take a talent out in the world and find out how you make money with it? Do you need to launch that product out there and make money with it? Could this be the time where you're actually actually making a purchase of something? Is it time to buy something? More so though, I think of this space of um, forgiveness and self-esteem for you. Your self-esteem, I think, has really taken a hit over the last six or seven months in multiple different ways. And now I feel like you're in a stage maybe of rebuilding, rebuilding, rebuilding. So trust this energy and trust you know, when we do esteemable things, we, we gain more self-esteem. So I support this energy for you fully, but remember Mars is not as active here, so you're not just gonna steamroll ahead at the second house space. Ooh, just got something too. Okay, so this could be that you're taking something that was a fantasy or something that's just been a vision that you've seen and you're trying to see if you can turn it into something tangible. What a great way to use that energy. All right, on the 16th, we've got a couple things happening. First of all, Venus is gonna come out of retrograde in the sign of Libra in your ninth house. This means ninth house things get a bit of magnetism. They get a bit of romance. They get a bit of sensuality, magnetism, um, diplomacy, right? Venus now out of retrograde in Libra. That's about partnerships in your ninth house, publishing, broadcasting, publishing yourself to the world. Um, education, religion, faith, international things, foreign languages, things that are just foreign to you, self-improvement, right? All of these things in the partnership zone have just gotten a lot of harmony. There could be better negotiations going on for you. There could be, um, there could also be an energy of money coming from some kind of outlet that has to do with broadcasting or putting yourself out there that ends up coming to you because Venus is about that money. Libra may bring in a nice partnership to make sure that this gets done. You've been trying to publish that book or start that YouTube channel forever. This could be your in. But whatever it is, the ninth house space, you become more willing to compromise, negotiate, talk about things and to move things forward. That's what's most important. Now on the same day, Mercury is going to go retrograde in Sagittarius. So your 11th house is getting busy. And what I love about the Mercury retrograde happening here is because we have Jupiter over here ready in his new position to expand you out, right? And he's like, let's go do it. Let's take on the world. Yeah, okay. But it's like, hold on 300. 
we need to look around and see what's what here, right? Mercury is our most observant planet. So he's going to turn around in this 11th house for you and say, all right, Aquarius, we need to look around some things. We need to have a conversation about what's happening in this 11th house because we need to talk about what needs to stay, what needs to go. What do we need to revise, re-edit? Who do we need to reconnect with, right? All of those things are going to come up. And as Mercury comes out of retrograde in December, then Jupiter is free to launch you forward. Now on the 22nd, the sun is also going to come into this 11th house. So you are focused on this 11th house this month. There is a lot of stuff happening. There's potential. There's action available to you here. So make sure you're taking advantage of those energies, okay? All right, on the 23rd, we have a full moon happening in Gemini. This lights up the fifth house space for you. Now, the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we're going to create shift here. Something needs to shift track. Now, this is in your fifth house space. So one of the first things I think of is joy. Do you have enough joy in your life? When's the last time you had fun. When is the last time that you sat with your children? When's the last time you got down on the floor with your children? When's the last time you got down on the floor with some other adults and just, you know, chilled out or whatever it is that you do. I also think in the fifth house space, this is a very much so a space of finding your voice finding your expression, these new people, these new opportunities, and this new esteem is coming in for you, Aquarius. This really is a season of shift for you. And finding your voice and your own self-expression to put those things out there, sometimes a little bit vulnerable, but I think it's worth it for you. Use this full moon to take yourself from where you were and how you were expressing before, especially because you've got Uranus in that third house. What's your communication like, right? And let's see if we can make some kind of a adjustment here that puts you in a better position to be seen, to be heard, and to be expressed as to what you need and what you also have to offer of value. Remember, you've got Mars and Pisces this month, that second house. I can't tell what your value is. I can't tell what your product value is, value is, if I don't know what it is. So I think it's a wonderful energy for that as well. Of course, at the full moon, some people could be getting pregnant. Some people could be having children, adopting children. It's very much so an energy of shift all the way around that fifth house. But my theme for you is where's the joy? And as we end the month, on the 24th, we've got Neptune coming direct out of retrograde. They're in Pisces, so in the second house as well. And oh, boom, I got you guys. Okay, so this is what happened. When Neptune is retrograde, we see the vision. We can see it. It's, yes, very good, right? Like, I, yes, I will manifest that, but I don't quite understand it yet. So we see it, we feel it, but we can't touch the vision yet. So when Neptune comes direct and out of retrograde, the dream, the vision, the manifestation becomes reality. We can make it real. We can make it tangible. We can make it concrete. And that is what I think you are doing with this Mars and Neptune energy this month. You are taking a vision. You are taking, if it's a vision for your life, a vision for a product, a vision for a friendship, whatever it is, you get to take it. And now moving forward, make it concrete. See these people over here, they got their life together. That's what's going to happen. You're going to take something that was a vision and you're going to make something concrete happen now and you're going to need every piece of your horoscope this month to get you going to be able to do it. I cannot wait to see what happens for you this month. Please keep me posted. What are you changing into a reality? I'm dying to know now because when channeled information comes in, I have to know your business. So let me know in the comment section down below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope you enjoy the blog and I will see you next month, Aquarius. Bye.